sanctuary. God is here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, oh God. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. There is a sweet spirit in this sanctuary. And we know that it's the spirit of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to you, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. On this morning, we give honor to Jehovah God, who is truly the head of my life. I give honor to my pastor, the Reverend Gary L. Coulter, of this great branch of Zion, Mount Lebanon Baptist Church in Peekskill, New York. I give honor to Lady Diane Coulter, to my husband, M. Roy Rochester, to my Mount Lebanon Church family, and to everyone that's visiting with us on today, on Zoom, on Facebook, and every other mode that you're visiting on. I bring you greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I will be coming from a very familiar scripture. That's Matthew, 20, Matthew 14, verses 24 through 30. Again, Matthew 14, 24 through 30, and I will be reading the King James Version. And it reads as thus, But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, talk, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. The word of the Lord for the people of God. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Let us pray. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that I come before you this morning, Lord God, with a grateful heart and a humble heart, Lord God. Father God, I thank you, Lord God, first for your son Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, for being in my life. I thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit, Lord God. And on this morning, God, I will bless the Lord at all times, God. Your praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord God, as I stand before your people to minister a word unto your people this morning. Lord God, someone needs to hear from you today, Father God. And I pray, God, that as you speak through your Holy Spirit in me, God, that they will hear what they need, that they will find comfort in your word, that they will find peace in your word, that they will find healing in your word. Father, someone is crying out this morning, Lord, save me. And God, I know, oh God, that you are saying, come. So, Father God, let us be obedient unto your word on today. For, oh God, your word, oh God, brings power. Your word brings life. And your word gives meaning. So, Father, on today, Lord God, I say, take over this sermon, Father God. Let it, them not see me, Father, but see the God in me, Father. Father, I thank you and I praise you for this opportunity, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray and give you thanks and say amen and amen. Hallelujah, God. I will be preaching from the topic, Call on Jesus. Call on Jesus. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we can all attest that this Christian journey has not been an easy one. It is like being on the ocean in a ship in the dark, being beaten by the strong winds, mighty waves, and ferocious storms. Honestly, sometimes it feels like there are more dark and windy moments in our lives than calm ones. Yet we still have to keep going because the journey is not complete and there's still much more work to do. We just need to know to call on Jesus and let him accompany us through the threatening winds and waves of life see. As I look at Matthew 14 in the verses leading to the text, 
Jesus had gotten word that his cousin, John the Baptist, who was in prison, was beheaded. Writers say he was in modern Jordan at the time. When Jesus got the news, he separated himself and took a ship to a deserted area. But when the people heard that, they followed him. Here it is, Jesus got bad news about his cousins, John Merler, the one who baptized him, but was unable to be alone because there were others who followed him that were in need. What do we do when ministry places a demand on us that supersedes our own personal need? Hallelujah. Jesus had just gotten the news of his cousin's death, but he had to put his feeling aside to care for others in need. The Bible says, having seen the large crowd of people that had followed him on foot, Jesus was moved with compassion towards them and he healed their sick. Even in bereavement, he still showed compassion in meeting the needs of the people who needed him. The Bible says that on that evening was when Jesus fed 5,000 men besides women and children with five loaves and two small fishes. We know from the text that Jesus' disciples were present with him. Therefore, they observed the healing of the sick and the feeding miracle. The Bible says immediately following that, Jesus made his disciples get into a ship to go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After Jesus sent the people away, he went to the mountain to get some alone time to pray. By that time, the ship which was containing the disciples were in the midst of the sea being tossed by the waves because the wind was contrary or going against it. Mark's version says Jesus saw his disciples were laboring and rowing as the wind was going against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, here comes Jesus to the rescue, walking on the sea, going to the head of his disciples. The fourth watch is around 3 a.m. in the morning. But as Psalm 121, 4 and 7 said, The Lord neither slumbers nor sleeps. He watches over us and he looks out for our soul. Therefore, it doesn't matter the time. He always see what we're going through and always shows up. The Bible says that when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were troubled and cried out for fear because they, were, they thought it was a spirit. Some writers said they thought it was a ghost. But immediately Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Be of good cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Somebody needs to hear that this morning. Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Peter answered in a, and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come unto you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Brethren, we often hear the sermons about Peter walking on water and Peter sinking because he took his eyes off Jesus. But we hardly ever hear a message on those who stayed in the ship. So on today, some attention will be placed on those who decided to stay in the ship. I don't know which ship you're in on today, but the Spirit of the Lord is saying it's time to come. It's time for you to get out of the ship of sorrow. It's time for you to get out of the ship of sickness, to get out of the ship of oppression, to get out of the ship of depression, to get out of the ship of hatred, to get out of the ship of bitterness, to get out of the ship that injustice placed you in and get out of the ship of sin. Hallelujah, God. It's time to answer the call of Jesus Christ to come be not afraid, be of good cheer, for the Lord who calls you surely will keep and deliver you. Hallelujah, God. You see, spiritually, many of us have been stuck together on the discipleship, on this spiritual journey. 
in unfavorable environment with others who are not like-minded, others who are fearful of every wind and waves that come, others who are not willing to try to step out on faith, others who, when it's time to move, want to stay still or stuff, others who doesn't have our backs, and others who prefer to be spectators instead of collaborators with Christ in this ministry. But in this atmosphere, things are about to change. We see the sign that God is doing a shift. The wind, a.k.a. Holy Spirit of God, is sending some huge waves to get our attention, to wake up those that are sleeping on God, to push those who want to succeed in the Lord ahead, and to keep us on, on, on course to obtain an eternal life. We need to learn how to call on Jesus and be connected with him. And when the wind blows and the waves come, we know for sure that Jesus will show up and intervene. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. And today I come to tell you, Mount Lebanon and friends, we have to be willing to step out of the ship because Jesus is calling us to come forth in this season. Many are looking at the darkness and the wave that surrounds us, but Jesus is the light and is with us. We can't stay motionless. God is asking for action. So the questions are, where are the Peters? And who are willing to make the first move or to make the first step? Are we going to be spectators? Or how are we going to follow in pursuit the ones who are willing to take the lead to get to Jesus? Amen. After all, anyone can respond to the call because like the other disciples, we all heard the call, come. Come. The problem is, like the disciples then and many now, Many have been traveling with Jesus and still don't know who he truly is. They don't know him like they should despite all the things that they have seen, heard, and know that he has done, even in their personal lives. I understand that we won't ever know everything about Jesus, but he has revealed enough of himself for us to work with like he did with his disciples face to face then and to us now through his word and through his Holy Spirit. They saw the works of his hand in how he did the impossible, how he healed the sick, how he delivered, and how they saw the miracle right before they got on the ship. But like many of us, how soon they forgot. Psalm 77, 11 reminds us to remember the works of the Lord and truly remember the miracles he did long ago. Church, we need to continuously keep in memory. Always remember what the Lord has done in the past because they are the key to the future. So we can't forget them. Always remember how he healed us and how he healed our loved ones from sickness. How he made a way out of no way when we had nothing. How he fed us when we were hungry and clothed us when we were naked. How he sheltered us from the storms in life. How he keeps us in our right mind. How he loved us when we didn't even love ourselves. How he saved us from the path of self-destruction and the traps that the enemy laid for us. How he died to deliver us from sin. How he protected us from the evil that surrounds us and how he cleaned us up to where we can now look into the mirror and like the reflection and are proud of who we see and are joyous of who we have become in him. We can't forget our past. If we keep in memory what Jesus did before, whether to us or those around us, we will never hesitate or be afraid to step out when he calls us. The scripture says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So where is thy faith? We should know for ourselves that he will never put us in a way that will result in harm to us and will never have us do things that he hasn't prepared us for. 
we're going through because God knows that we can go through. As a matter of fact, he's in it with us. He said he will take us through. He put us in the fire to test us like silver and try us like gold. But when we come forth, we will be pure as gold and pure as silver. We'll be that person that he intends for us to be. So we have to know and to learn how and when to call on Jesus. Hallelujah, God. It is the Lord who gives us the grace to do what he has asked us to do. So do not be afraid. Try and trust him. We need to get to a place in the Lord where we stop being so afraid. I'm tired of seeing believers being afraid. As the Lord said in 2 Timothy 1 to 7, he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So where is that power? Where is that sound mind so that when the enemy come and want to penetrate, you can dismiss him? And where is that love for God to say, God, I know that I can do it because thou art with me. Therefore, like Peter, we must be willing to say, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come on the water, on the sea of life. We must always desire to be in the presence of the Lord. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is peace. In the presence of the Lord, we find comfort. Hallelujah, God. Jesus had already told his disciples to cheer up and be joyful. He said it is high meaning he revealed himself to them. And then he offered comfort and assurance to them when he told them, do not be afraid. So what was the problem? The issue is some people have become so comfortable in the ship that despite the wind forcing the waves to beat, I need for them to get out. They refuse to get up because they're focusing on the waves and seeing the threat to their lives that they won't respond to the call of the Lord who is standing right there. They won't take a step of faith to meet the one who came to save them. My God, help us, Lord. Brethren, we better quickly realize that physically we're in a dark season and supernaturally we're in a windy season. The next move of wind coming might not only cause the waves to beat on the ship that we're in, but the force of the wind might be so strong that it overthrow or capsize the ship. What are we going to do then? The only sure lifeline, the only sure lifeguard, the only sure life jacket or life armor is Jesus Christ. He says everyone who calls on him will be saved, Romans 10 and 13. Do you believe it? If you do believe, get up and get moving towards your destiny in Jesus Christ. You can't say you believe and still say seated, sitting on the boat that's about to sink. Brethren, don't risk your life in staying on the ship on our dangerous condition in your life produced by sin. The only ship we're safe in is the love ship. That is, being in Jesus Christ, the ship of sin and its attracting schemes are only temporary and going nowhere but straight to hell. But the ship of love, God's ship, will take you and I to eternal paradise. You see, the conversation was between Jesus and Peter because he was the one who, despite the fear and anxiety, had the boldness to say something. But the invitation was to those who heard it. I say today, stop sitting and watching in fear for the next wave that's going to hit your ship or to see what will happen to the person who steps out of the ship. Because God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, need not be ashamed or afraid. With that said, when, when some of us are going through we tend to be saying oh god knows it god sees it but we never try to say god i trust you i'm about to make the step 
when are some of you gonna see that you are risking your life staying in a ship that offers you temporary security only Jesus can give you real security only Jesus stepping out of the ship and going to Jesus on water in what some will say is unstable platform is better than sitting in a ship that will head in destruction just like those who remain in it the Bible says when Peter was come out of the ship he walked on water to go to Jesus hadn't Peter stepped out of the ship he would not have known his capabilities of standing on water much more walking in water Peter had a purpose he wanted to be with Jesus he was heading in the direction to where Jesus was. No matter what the condition or circumstance was, we just have to make up in our minds like Peter to try to get to Jesus. We have to, especially in this season, try to get to Jesus. How many of you know that when you start going after Jesus, the enemy is going to come to try to trip you up or try to stop you? He can only succeed only if you let him. Don't be afraid. Remember that the one who is before you is greater than the one who is after you. Peter had already took a step of faith by asking Jesus to tell him to come. After all, if we look closely at the text, it was Peter who asked Jesus to invite him to walk on water. Jesus didn't suggest it. Peter did. All Jesus did was made it known that it was him and not a ghost that was walking. We always want to be with Jesus, but are we willing to say, Jesus, let me come, even if the environment doesn't seem favorable, even if the environment seems dangerous, are we going to ask God to call us to come where he is? Because sometimes, brethren, God is taking us into some territory that are dangerous. But when God said, come, are we willing to say, Lord, bid me? Lord, help me. Are we willing to do so? I would think how, that having witnessed Jesus doing healing and miracles, seeing what was happening right before he got on the ship, Peter may have thought to himself, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be where you are, Jesus. How many of us are thinking like that? Saying, God, I want to be where you are. God, I want to be like you. That's what God called us to be. He called us to be imitators of Christ. But are we imitating Christ? How are we still stuck in the boat, wondering about the waves that are coming? They didn't even hit yet, but we're looking ahead, seeing them out in the ocean coming and trying to find security in the boat that if a strong wind comes, it's destroyed. What are we willing to do for God? The Bible says when Peter saw how gusty the wind was, he was afraid and began to sink. The point is, sitting in the ship, Peter probably didn't see how bad outside was because it was dark. And he was toiling with the others. But when he stepped out, it was only then that he saw how dangerous it was. You see, when we're inside looking out, we won't see everything. It's when we get out that we'll realize that it's not what it seemed to be. But we always have to remember that Jesus is there. Therefore, we need not be afraid. All we have to do is call on Jesus. You see, seeing and being in danger will put us in a state of fear and panic. So when Peter, being human, looked at the gusty wind, he began to sink. At that time, his faith was deactivated. It was faith that allowed him to step out to walk on water. But the moment he started looking at the sea, his faith started going down. But as he was sinking, his faith rebooted. And he cried out, Lord, save me. You see, sometimes our faith is going to waver. Sometimes our faith is going to find itself deactivated. Because when the circumstance first comes, the first thing we look at is self.
self and the condition, but the Holy Spirit is there to reboot us and increase us in that faith that we will say, God, here I come. Here I come, Lord. You see, we have to know when to call on the Lord for help and to act specifically for what we need. The Bible says we have desire, but we have not because we ask not. So don't stay drowning in the situations that scare you, feeling that you have been defeated and afraid, knowing that Jesus is there and not ask him for what you need. He already knows your immediate needs and future needs, but want to see if you recognize that you have a need. Are you going to be too proud or too ashamed or too arrogant to ask for what you need? And by the way, stop telling everyone God knows what you need and you haven't talked to him about it. Yes, he does, but don't expect him to deliver something that you haven't asked for. He will deliver. But stop thinking that God is supposed to bow down to your needs. No, it's the other way around. You're supposed to bow down to God and stop acting like he owes us everything. That's the reason why he says we act and it shall be given. We need to stop being content with just saying, God knows what I need. God requires our action for the blessings to be delivered unto us. He clearly said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. So if we're not doing those things, how are we going to say, God, we need this gift. God, we need to know our purpose. When we're not asking God, what is our purpose? What gifts do you have for me to use to edify the body of Christ? We need to learn to ask. I know some people tend to say that. Don't keep asking God for the same thing. Did God ever tell us that he'd get tired of us asking for the same thing? The devil is a liar. He doesn't want us to ask because if God should give us what he intends to give us when we ask, my God, he couldn't, the, the enemy cannot contain or destroy us. So don't let the enemy continue to trick us up. We have to know who we are in God. We have to know the promises of God. We have to know that what God tells us will come to pass. Because after all, he said his word will accomplish that which he set out to accomplish and it will not return void. Concerning us in that he said in that which it please it will not return void So we have to know what God promised us and stop letting the enemy tell us what God will or will not do You see upon Peter's call to Jesus to save him the Bible says immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and Said unto Peter oh you of little faith. Why did you doubt? Peter's moment of doubt or reduced faith came when he allowed the gust, the gust to wind or the situation he was in to distract him and scare him into panic mode to the point where he started sinking. He should have known better because Jesus, whom he had witnessed perform miracles, was right there with him. Peter was doing fine walking on water and heading in the direction where Jesus hills until he looked at self and not the author and finisher of his faith, Jesus. He looked at his troubles and not continuously stayed focused on Jesus. However, thank God he gathered what little faith he had left and the courage to call on Jesus to save him. And the Bible says immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and saved him. You see Jesus' response when we call to him. We should do likewise and respond when he calls us. In closing, as the song say, I am so glad trouble don't last always. God knows how we are and that we couldn't bear it, so he allows them to come in seasons. We have to learn how to appreciate the strong winds and waves that beat against our vessel, our bodies. It is important that we're able to recognize when it's time to call on the Lord Jesus and that we're able to follow his command. Brethren, many of us feel tired of being blown by the strong winds and beaten by life's waves, but they are there to show us who Jesus is in our lives, to keep us in continuous closeness with the Lord, to help us overcome our fears and exercise faith, to show us our level of faith in the Lord Jesus, to keep us dependent on the Lord Jesus, to show us how far we have come in the Lord Jesus, to make us strong in the Lord,
Lord to bring us into worship and praise before the Lord and to show us that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. How can we get off the boat? It's very simple. We need to believe in and trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding and in all our ways acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. We need to always want to be in the presence of the Lord. That should push us to step out on faith to where he's leading us. We need to be willing to move when the Lord says to move and to show up when the Lord asks us to come. We need to be consistent in asking the Lord to remove the doubt and the fear and increase us in faith. We need to pay attention when he shows up to rescue us and do as he commands. And we need to remember that if he did it before, he sure can do it again. Call on Jesus. And as the Lord said in Genesis 28, 15, I am with you and I will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. To God be the glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. To God be the glory. At this time, Rochester is coming to give us the benediction. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together for her as she comes to give us the benediction. Great work. Great work. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. To God be the glory. Um, I just want to publicly thank Pastor for allowing me to bring the word on today. I can't say thank you enough because you don't have to share the platform that God has given you with us, but you do because you are a humble man of God. And I am here to publicly thank you and personally thank you for what you have been doing in my life and being obedient to God and allowing him to use you to bless us who are coming up in ministry. Church, remember to always call on the Lord. He's ever present, everywhere, and ever knowing. And with that said, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word that has gone forth on today, Father God. I know, oh God, that you have spoken to me through your Holy Spirit. God, I pray, oh God, that someone, oh God, let the word, oh God, penetrate in their heart, God. And that, Lord God, as it reaches, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will move on the inside, Lord God, and that faith will produce, oh God, as they step out in action, Lord God. Step out of the boat of sin, Father God. Step out of the boat that, oh God, has them crippled, oh God. Step out of the boat, oh God, that, Lord God, tell them that they can't, Father God. Remind us, Lord God, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And on today, Lord God, I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, and I give you all the glory, hallelujah. I give you all the praise, hallelujah, and I give you all the honor, Lord God. God bless your people on today. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray, O oh God, and I give you thanks, Father. Father God, let your word, O oh God, be upon them. Let the grace of the Lord Jesus be upon them, Father God. Oh God, and the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us all henceforth, even now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks and say amen and amen. <laughs>